five. New lamps for old. Where was Abanaza all this time? When he could not get the lamp from Aladdin, he went home to Morocco. He was very angry with Aladdin. But the boy is dead now, he thought, and perhaps next year, I can go back and get the lamp. One day, he got out his seven black stones. These stones were magic, and when he put them in water, the water could tell him many things. Soon. He could see the magic lamp in the water, but it was not under the white stone in the Arabian Hills. It was in a palace. How did this happen? Said Abanaza. I must go back to Arabia and find this palace. After some months, he arrived again in the city in Arabia. Soon, he saw the new palace, and asked a man in the street, "Who lives there?" "That's Aladdin's palace," was the answer. "Princess Badur Al Budur's husband, a good man, and very rich." Abanaza said nothing and walked away. That lazy, good-for-nothing boy, he thought angrily. So he has the magic lamp, and he knows about the genie. How can I get the lamp back? For the next week, Abanaza watched Aladdin's palace. One day, Aladdin and his friends left the palace to go hunting in the hills. Good, Abanaza thought. Now I can get the lamp. After Aladdin left, Princess Badur Al Budur went into the palace gardens. She sat under a tree, and looked at the flowers. Then she heard a noise in the street, and called her slave girl, Fozia. What's the matter? Who's making that noise? She asked. Fozia, go and look in the street. When Fozia came back, she had a smile on her face. Mistress, she said, "The children in the street are laughing at an old man. He's selling lamps, but not for money. New lamps for old!" he cries. "Give me an old lamp, and you can have a new lamp. So everybody's getting new lamps." Badur Al Budur laughed. Do we have an old lamp for him? Yes, my husband's old lamp. Go and get it. The princess knew nothing about the lamp or its magic. Fozia went into the palace and came back with Aladdin's lamp. Here it is, mistress," she said. Go and give it to the old man," the princess laughed. "Aladdin can have a nice new lamp." Fozia went out into the street with the lamp. "New lamps for old," the old man called, and the children behind him laughed and called. New lamps for old. <laughs> the old man, it was Abanaza, of course, saw the lamp in Fozia's hands, and knew it at once, because of the picture in the water 
of his magic stones. He took the old lamp, gave a new lamp to Forzia, and then quickly walked away. He walked out of the city into the hills. Then he took out the lamp and rubbed it. Whoosh! At once, the genie of the lamp came to him. I am here, master, he said. What is your wish? Carry Aladdin's palace, the princess, and me back to Morocco at once, Abanaza said. The Sultan can kill Aladdin for me. To hear is to obey. In a second, Abanaza, the palace, the gardens, and the princess were in Morocco, and in front of the Sultan's palace, there was now only a little red smoke. Chapter 6 There and Back Again In the evening, Aladdin and his friends finished hunting and began to go home. Suddenly, a friend said, Aladdin, look! The Sultan's men are coming! With swords in their hands, what do they want? I don't know, Aladdin answered. When the Sultan's men arrived, they said, Aladdin, we must take you to the Sultan. He's very angry. Why? asked Aladdin, but the men could not tell him. In his palace... The Sultan took Aladdin to a window. Where is your palace? he cried angrily. And where is my daughter? Answer me! Aladdin looked out of the window. There was only the ground and the sky. No palace, no gardens, nothing. He closed his eyes, opened them and looked again. And he had no answer for the sultan. It's black magic. I always said that, the vizier said quietly in the sultan's ear. Your majesty, Aladdin put his head at the sultan's feet. Kill me now. I do not want to live without Badur al-Budur. There were tears in his eyes. Find her in forty days, or you die, the sultan said. I hear and obey, your majesty, Aladdin answered. But without his magic lamp, what could Aladdin do? He went out from the city and looked and looked for his wife and his palace, but of course he did not find them. After thirty-seven days, he sat by a river and cried, Oh, Badur al-Budur, my love, where are you? Where can I look now? He put his hands into the water of the river, and then he saw the magician's ring on his little finger. He began to rub it. Whoosh! Out of the blue smoke came the jinny of the ring. What is your wish, master? he asked. Find my wife and bring her back to me, answered Aladdin. Please. Master, I cannot do that. 
The genie of the lamp took the princess away, and only the genie of the lamp can bring her back. But I can take you to her. Take me then, quickly. To hear is to obey. It is many, many miles from Arabia to Morocco, but Aladdin was there in a second, and there was his palace, in front of him. He went into the gardens and looked up at the windows. Badur al Budur, he cried, "Are you there?" In the palace. Badur al Budur heard him. Is that Aladdin? She thought. But he is far away in Arabia. She went to the window, opened it, and looked out. Aladdin! She cried. Oh, my love! For the first time in many days, Aladdin smiled. Come up quickly! The princess called. The magician is not here now. Her slave girl ran down and opened a little door into the gardens. Aladdin ran up to the princess's rooms, and in a second she was in his arms. Oh, my love! The princess said, "A bad man carried me here, a magician. His name is." His name is Abanaza, and I am going to kill him," said Aladdin. "Tell me, does he have my old lamp?" "Yes," Badur al Budur said. "He always carries it with him. I know about its magic now because he told me. Oh, why did I give it away?" "Listen, my love." Said Aladdin, "I'm going to give you some sleeping powder. When he comes here again, you must give him a drink and put the powder in it. When he is asleep, I can kill him. Don't be afraid. I'm going to take you home very soon. Now for some good magic." He began to rub his ring. Whoosh! What is your wish, master? Said the genie of the ring. Bring me some sleeping powder, said Aladdin. To hear is to obey. In a second, the genie was back with some sleeping powder. Then Aladdin and the princess waited for Abanaza. In the evening, they heard him on the stairs. "Don't be afraid," Aladdin said quietly to his wife. "I am in the next room and can be with you in a second." He went quickly into the next room and stood behind the door. Abanaza opened the door of Badur al Budur's room and came in. He smiled. "You are more beautiful every day, Badur al Budur," he said. "Your husband, that good-for-nothing Aladdin, is dead now. You must marry me." You can have gold, jewels, palaces, anything, but you must be my wife. For the first time, the princess smiled at Abanaza. Why not? She said, "You are a rich man, and I am happy here." Yes. Let's drink to that. And she gave him a tall gold cup with the drink and the powder in it. 
Let us drink from one cup, Abanaza, she said, and smiled at him. You first, then me. In my country, new husbands and wives always do this. To Badur al Budur, the most beautiful woman in Morocco, Abanaza said happily. And my wife. He looked into Badur al Budur's eyes and began to drink. Very afraid, the princess watched him. But it was a good sleeping powder, and after five seconds, Abanaza's eyes closed and he was asleep. The princess ran to the door of the next room. Quick! Aladdin, she called. Aladdin ran in with his sword and saw the sleeping magician. Well done, my love, he said. Now, go into the next room and do not watch. Badur al Budur ran to the next room and closed the door. Aladdin put his hand in Abanaza's pocket. And took out the lamp. He put it carefully into the pocket of his coat, and then stood up. The sword did its work quickly, and Abanaza never opened his eyes again. The princess came back into the room, and ran to Aladdin. He took her in his arms. The magician is dead, he said. And now we can go home. He began to rub the lamp. Whoosh! Fire and red smoke came from the lamp. The princess watched, afraid. I am here, master," said the genie of the lamp. "What is your wish? Carry this palace." Badur al Budur and me back to our city in Arabia, but leave that dog Abanaza here. To hear is to obey," said the genie. When the Sultan looked out of his window and saw Aladdin's palace again, he was a happy man. And when he took his daughter in his arms, he was the happiest man in Arabia. From that day, Aladdin and Badur al Budur lived happily in their palace. They lived for many years, and had many children. But Aladdin always carried the magic lamp with him, day and night. Thank、you